We just saw Blake Griffin throw down two of his 44 points in a win over the Clippers. But check out Griffin here. He appears to ignore Clippers owner Steve Ballmer <laughs> after finishing up his pregame shooting routine. Here's what Blake had to say after the game. I mean, that, you know, for nine years now, as soon as I'm done doing my pregame shooting, I make sure there's a path and I take off running to the locker room and I don't stop running. So a lot of you know that. A lot of you, a lot of you have been here. Um, for a long time, and a lot of you have seen me do that before. So um, I don't change that for anybody. Um, you know, to tweet out something like that, like what you did, I thought was kind of because um, you know that. Um, but that's just that's just what that's what it was, plain and simple. It wasn't anything planned. Um, every single game I've done this for, I don't know how long. So. Would you shake it? Would you shake his hand if he's if it wasn't prior to your your warm up? Uh, I, I'm not, honestly not here to answer hypothetical questions, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so get this though: if you check Blake Griffin's likes on Twitter, he liked a tweet on that same day as the alleged snub here from the Athletics Michael Lee, which included, "Can't tell a dude he's a Clipper for life, then trade him to Detroit six months later and expect a handshake." So, Paul, do you buy Blake, uh, Blake's excuse for ignoring Palmer? I'll buy it. He was locked in. He's doing his pregame routine. Come on. Oh, come leave on, me alone. Man. Leave Paul. me alone. Paul. Come on now. Players have their routine. <laughs> Something like yeah. that could throw him off his game. You see, he went out and had 40. Shoot. Because he was mad at Palmer. Oh, if he had <laughs> shook Palmer's hand, he probably would have had a bad game, lost. Man, was locked in, obviously. Oh. <laughs> Kevin. So, it's really interesting. Um, <laughs> I sat with Blake a couple weeks ago, and you were just gonna. We talked about the first matchup between the two teams last year, right after the trade. He's like, you know, I was emotional. I didn't handle it well. And he's like, you know, there's all this stuff kind of swirling. For instance, a member of the Clippers broadcast team thought I snubbed him because I ran from the court right past him to the tunnel. I've been doing this thing for nine years. It wasn't a detail I included in the story initially because I didn't think it was that interesting. And lo and behold, like Sprint Gate hits again. Okay. That said, I don't think Blake Griffin owes Steve Ballmer no, anything. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, I, I, I you know, that, that that's the, that's, I, I think the, the, look, Steve Ballmer wanted to feel better, right? Like he, he called a guy Clipper for life. He pitched him on sort of a lifetime service. Uh, and then he traded him, which is by the way, entirely Steve Ballmer's right. And right. you know, this was a social transaction. I want to feel better about it. I'm going to shake Blake's hand. Blake doesn't owe him that. Right, and here's the thing. I'm not going to tell a grown man in all seriousness about Blake. Like, I'm not telling a grown man how he should feel and when he should feel like he should get over something. Maybe it does bother him, and he needs it for fuel, and good for him if that's the case. I I think there's a case to be made. If you want to say to hey Blake, hey, look, I know you have this ritual. If you don't want this to become a thing, take five seconds, go over, pat the guy on the shoulder, and then sprint. But again, I don't think he has to do that. No, he doesn't. No, no. He could have did it in the back. I mean, he knows where Blake is. He knows where he have to go to walk in the hallway. He wanted to do it in front of everybody. He get, you know, for Instagram. Do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. Come on. <laughs>